that my name is Wayne Swanson. I'm with the Palm Springs Air Museum, and we're going to interview uh, Mr. Alexander McKay Curie. And you were a uh, dispatch writer, um, and uh, your rank was leading airman. Leading, yeah. Leading okay. Airman. Okay. That's, that's right. Uh, that's right. All right. Let's see. Um, There's the dot. Okay. So we're off and running. <clears throat> okay, would you start, Alex? Um, let me find my one sheet here. Um, could you spell your name, please? You mean Alexander, Alexander Mackay? Yeah. Right. That's Scotch. Okay. So A L E X A N D E R. And then capital M C, capital K A Y. Right. And then Curry C U R R I E. Okay. Very good. Uh, where were you born, Alex? In Greenwich, Scotland. Okay. And when was that? What was your birth date? January the twenty second, nineteen twenty one. Okay, and um, what town and how large was the town? Oh, I, I just born we left. I came over when I was a one year old. When you were one year old, we okay. We went to Montreal, Canada. And um, what was your father's name? Uh, there's a good one for you. Okay. Alec, his name was Alec. His Alec name was Alec, Alec also. Yeah. Exactly. And what about your mother? M Margaret. Margaret, okay, and do you happen to know where they met? No. No? I and um, you say that soon after you were born, you came to Canada. Yeah. Yes. Where in Canada did you uh, come to? Montreal, Quebec. Okay, and was there a reason of why you came to Canada? Yes. My father was a, a, a plater. Mm -hmm. Ship later. Okay. On the Clyde. Yes. And I was one year old. Mm -hmm. Came over on the Cassandra. Yes. Ship. And uh, when he got to, he came over to work for Vickers mm -hmm. in Montreal. And uh, he didn't like the French. Mm -hmm. he, and he didn't want to learn French. Mm -hmm. So he quit. And mm -hmm. we bought a business in Montreal. Okay. And we operated a business. And then when I came back from the war, I. I bought the business, mm -hmm. and um, and Woolworths put me out of business. Okay, now what the was the business? The stationery store. Stationery store. Yeah. Okay, and this was um, in yeah. Toronto. No, Montreal. M Montreal. No, Montreal. Montreal. Okay, very good. Um, then we came to the states. Okay. We came from Montreal to White Salmon, Washington. Okay. At the Skyline Hospital. <laughs> my wife was a nurse. Okay. And we flipped a coin one day. One Sunday we flipped a coin. We had to come to Portland, Oregon, or Edmonton, Alberta. Okay. So we decided to come to Portland, Oregon, because a friend of mine was wrestling out here. All right. So yeah. let's go back. Yeah. In that you were in Montreal, and your father had been um, uh, building ships. Yeah. He How was a did ship later? Okay, and did he do that in Montreal? Yeah. Okay. And that's when he, he, did, he didn't like the French. Okay. So he, so he decided to get out of shipbuilding and we bought a business. And this shipbuilding was this shipbuilding for the war? Yeah. Okay. And so you bought the stationery well, business. Well, it wasn't for the war actually. Uh, he, I don't know. He was in the First World War. Okay. So this was really between. Yeah. When did you come over? Uh, your uh, birth date was um, 21. We must, we must have come yeah, over well, in 22. It would be 22. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And so then he was in the stationery business till um, till you came back from the war. No, he he was uh, did something else, but I forget. I was only a kid. Okay. So I think we bought the he bought the business. I think. In 28 or 29. All right, all right, very and, good. Uh, then 
I left, went over. Yeah, I went over in, I think it was March 40, but I don't have the record. Sure, understand, and understand. Then, uh, and then I went, I, they were looking for pilots. Yes, okay, let's, let's go back a little bit to your family. Yeah, okay. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I had, uh, we, my father, we had a family of, of uh, one, two, three, four sisters and a brother. Six of family. Okay, when you arrived in Montreal, um, what kind of a neighborhood? Did you come into a Scottish neighborhood? Yeah, mostly. Mostly? On the northwest of Montreal. Northwest, okay. And um, that was during the, uh, what we call the Depression. Yeah. So, um, was, um, were things tight during that time? Were they ever. Were they ever. <laughs> was, uh, we were... On this, we'll say we were on this corner, and two blocks over, there was a park. Mm -hmm. and people used to line up for a bowl of soup from where we were all around to where you were, around uh -huh. this whole park to the Salvation Army and get a bowl of soup. Okay. And my father was very religious. Okay. And, uh, and he would give half away of everything to somebody else. Is that right? And uh, even in the business, he was so concerned with the church mm -hmm. that even if we were busy in the store and I started working in the store when I was about nine mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he would go him and the brewmaster of Molson mm -hmm. Brewery would mm -hmm. uh, go and clean the church with the church mm -hmm. and so that's when I learned to operate a business interesting and now talk about the depression a bit in that uh, you guys came over in the early 20s and then the depression hit in the late 20s into the 30s and um yeah i would say i would say the real depression was from the 20 28 i guess mm -hmm. to about the 33 Mm -hmm. Then they start to get a little help. Okay, but did it affect everybody? Oh yeah. So did your business uh, go down? Yeah. Okay. Quite a bit. And and then you guys actually had to get in the soup lines. Yeah. Okay. No. No. No, we never. We were still considered middle class. Okay. Because we still had uh, had had a business going. A roof over our head and food to eat. Okay. And, okay. Uh, I wish I had brought that paper. I could show you what we wrote, and it, it was what my wife, first wife, uh, wrote. Uh, if you about dirty dishes in the sink, you uh -huh. know, that the Lord gave us food oh, to yes. eat and all that. And that was and during the Depression. My my mother wrote that. Okay. And June signed it. Okay. Now, did you, as a young person, did you have uh, jobs? Uh, did you um, uh, work for the family? Well, yeah, I, but I, I delivered newspapers as well as working in the store. Okay. I delivered newspapers as okay. a kid. Okay. And uh, then I got working in the store when I was about 12, mm -hmm. full time. Okay. What about well, it? Not full, really full time because I worked there here and then I went and, and uh, worked in the pro shop at the golf club. Okay. Uh, so as I could get free golf. Oh my gosh! So uh, I worked there. I worked there three hours a day. And you were a teenager, young teenager, yeah. 10, 12 years old. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, that picture there. That's yes. About there. I was, I was 13 when that picture was taken. Yes. Um, now, what about school? School. I didn't graduate. You didn't graduate. I went to 10th grade. Okay. I didn't didn't like school. So okay. I, took, I was. I control. I I did most of all the buying in the store when I was 13, 14. Yes. And uh, my sister was the one who told, got involved with my father and told him, let Alec do mm -hmm. the buying. Okay. Because he, I don't know how he succeeded what he did. Mm -hmm. He was not a storekeeper. But okay. He, but you it. seem to have that ability. I, I had the ability to, to run the store. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, did your other um, brothers and sisters help? Two of my sisters helped. And uh, my brother, unfortunately, he drowned when I was eight years old. Okay. My older brother. Uh-huh. And my dog, that dog, that's why. Yes. I, 
found the body. I'll be darn. Three, oh, three days later. Oh my gosh! And that was in a normal a river or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, he was training for the Olympics. Is that right? The Olympics. Him and Ronnie Bailey. Mm -hmm. he, Ronnie Bailey was a driver. My, my brother was a swimmer. Yes. And uh, he, of course, he got cramps and he got caught in the weeds, I guess. Oh, anyway, I was on. I said, well, I talked to this. What, what we, we call a sheriff here, mm -hmm. but he was a provincial there mm -hmm. in Canada. I said, you know, I said we should bring the dog up. Mm -hmm. My father, no, no, no. You know, mm -hmm. so we got in a big argument. Brought the dog up within an hour. He found the body. Oh, Peter! You know? Oh my God! So that was my mother. Okay. Giving my father a good talking to. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now you are, um, oh, 12, 13, 14 years old, and you're working in the store. Working in the store. And then, um, what did you hear first about World War II? Oh. World War II, we were in there. World War II for us in Canada was 39. 39, yes. And um, when when it come, you know, uh, friends were all getting drafted, you mm -hmm. know, and I didn't want to go in the Army. Yes. So I applied for for the Air Force. Not and uh, Today you wouldn't be accepted. You'd have to have high school graduation. Yes. Anyway, I took the test, and, and when it was finished, I got the exam back, and I was deaf. Oh, no kidding. I said, deaf? Got to be kidding. So anyway, I went back, and this sergeant, he said, well, hey, they said you're deaf. Why don't you just say okay and not? He said, they'll get me in some way or the other, so I am I want another test. Mm -hmm. So they gave me another test, and they passed me in. And the first job I had, because I had no, you know, special skill. First job I had, they sent me to Toronto and then to, we were just to outfit, outfit the soldiers with their their uniform. So a supply type so of... A supply type. Right. Because I'd been in the store. Yes. You know? So that's the way they sent me over overseas as a, as a store master, they called it. Okay, and where did you go overseas and how did you get there? What, went over on... Uh, and uh, I think it was called uh, Normandy or something. Mm -hmm. It was a French ship. A passenger liner. Yeah, a passenger liner. Yeah. And uh, I ended up uh, in Croydon. Croydon? Croydon, England. Okay. That's outside of London. Mm hmm And that's where the Spitfires were. Okay. And then uh, we, they're looking for pilots, and so we put our name in in a way. Mm hmm <laughs> And they sent us back to Canada. Where so, in Canada? Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Okay. And uh, I, that's where I, I don't know, a few hours. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they said I was snow blind. Okay. And they put me in the flying control, which is the worst job you can get. Now, flying control would be like a control tower? In the control tower. Yes. And, uh, and that's why, how come I got to... Uh, go down to the auxiliary field, they called it, mm -hmm. and it was 27 miles, 24, I think, miles okay. away from Yorkton, and that's when that accident happened where we tilted and we fell on the ground. Okay, now you were, uh, this accident, this was an airplane accident, and you were flying in a small airplane? Yeah, an Anson. An Anson, yeah. okay, and you were like going from here to there? Yep. No, they were picking me up to take me back to the airport. Oh, I see. You see, they bring me in in the morning. Yes. And it, they had an old Dodge truck there with the, uh, but you know, they, those days we had no communication, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> 1941. Yes. And uh, so they bring you over in the morning and take you home at night. Okay. And that's when you took at night mm -hmm. and um, it was a violent storm and lightning struck our thing and just ripped the fabric on the side and, and the pilot just got shocked I guess he tilted mm -hmm. and we fell on the ground and by good luck that's what happened because now, if we had been all three sitting down in the seat we might have been nowhere yes you know? now you were already flying you were up in the air were you very high no not about as high as the ceiling okay 20 feet or so about yeah. 20 feet high uh-huh and he he flew the aircraft about 50 yards ahead okay. uh -huh. and crashed it on, on the ground and uh, he jumped out and 
boom. The plane caught exploded. Fire. Caught fire. Now, you had not gotten out by then? Yeah, we were on the ground. Oh, you were on the ground. And the okay. pilot was also out. Okay. He, there was nobody in the plane when the bomb okay. blew up. Mm -hmm. And then that farmer coming down from campsite, he was on his way to Yorkton. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, when he saw the, the crash, mm -hmm. he reported it in Yorkton. Mm -hmm. and so when we got back to the station, he said, we thought you guys were dead. Because... <laughs> It was ours because we we had also hitchhike. Okay. To to get back home. Okay, but you went back. To, you were close to the station when the crash happened. No. No. We, we were twenty twenty four miles. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, it was, it's just a straight road, like okay. you know, going yes. from, the da from the Dallas to Hood River. You know? Yes. And uh, so that's how it happened. Uh huh. And, uh, and then. When I was going back to Montreal after my wife passed away, I was bringing, uh, I met this lady, and, mm -hmm. and uh, so we, I was one there to see the airport where I took, took my first training, and it wasn't there anymore, so I told him the story. I yes. said, you know, I was involved in that crash at Ryan, yeah. and he's, his mouth flew off. Uh -huh. Really? I said, yeah. He says, well, I'm the man who reported the fire. Is that so right? I told my, she became my wife. And mm -hmm. I said, get, I had a motor home then. Mm -hmm. I said, get in there and call your mother mm -hmm. in Portland, Oregon. We were up in New York in Saskatchewan. Uh, A&T had lent me a, a cell phone. Mm -hmm. The cell phone was about this big, about mm -hmm. this high. But he lent it to me. In which, mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, that's how. And uh, her mother couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. You know, well, how can you believe you meet a forty-two years later? Yes. You know, what a coincidence. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, let's go back to the. Uh, never got his name. That yes. You know, okay. dummy. Let's go back to the crash. In that you were being picked up to go back. Yeah. And the crash happened twenty miles away from where you took off. Yeah. And a farmer found you. No, he didn't. He didn't find any of us. He okay. just saw the. He, he just, saw the. He just saw the. He and so he reported it. He, yeah, he just saw the fire. Okay. He reported a fire. Okay. That's all he did. He reported a fire. He didn't know if it was an aircraft or what. Okay. And then, since you guys were outside of the airplane, and basically maybe you were burned a little bit, but no. you weren't hurt. No. Oh, it you, hadn't caught. Hadn't no. even caught fire. See? Okay. It was when he must have crashed on the ground. Right. The plane. The pilot himself right because uh, we were you know 50 yards away we okay. saw the whole thing okay we were standing watching it yes and we were hoping that he he would get out uh-huh and he did okay and then you had to hitchhike back to the airport to the airport yeah. how long did that take you oh, I'd say I say by the time we stood on on the highway f waiting for her next car and it was at night too, too. Often. Was, yeah it, yeah I say we ended up, must have been about, we must have got back to the airport about 6.30. I'll be darned. Know. But the highway, you know, there's not too many cars in those okay. days either, okay. you know. And, and then did you have to spend the night there at the airport? Oh, yeah, well, I, that's where we were based. Okay. I was based there. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. And that's where they flew us every morning. Yeah, all right. To, to the to outlying place. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. And pick us up, take right. us home. Now, were you in um, uh, that location uh, your whole time in the army, in the Air Force? No, no. No, that's when, uh, that's when I signed the paper to be a dispatch rider. Okay. And a few days later, we were on our way back to to England. Okay. I was only in New York in, oh, just a little over a year because, uh, I, I, yeah, a little over a year because I, I, I even played hockey for the. the the town. Okay. You know. And um, and then and then it was about March or March or April. Okay. We went back over, and that's when I went over in Queen Elizabeth. Okay. And okay. from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Okay. Now we're uh, going back and forth a little bit. Um, this Croyton was that was in Canada. No. 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 Croyton, England. Croyton, and that's where the crash happened. No. No. Okay. Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, okay, it, and yeah, that was? That was 
That was in Saskatchewan. Okay, okay. And then it was just later, oh, very few, maybe a month, we saw this paper. Mm -hmm. And so we both signed it. And and a few days later, we were on our way to, to, <laughs> to England. Okay, from Saskatchewan. From no, from nope. Nova Scotia. From Nova Scotia, from Halifax. Halifax. Nova, yeah. Okay, and what boat was that in? Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. When we saw that towering above the, yes. the hotel, mm -hmm. I thought, holy Jesus, what's that? And then they said, it's the Queen Elizabeth. Well, you know, I was a kid. Uh huh. You know, I was about 19 then. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I want to go back just a minute in that um, before the airplane crash, you were in uh, Saskatchewan, were you? And you had signed up for pilot training. No, in, in England. In England. I signed. Okay. And they sent me back to Canada. They sent you back to Canada because you didn't finish the pilot training. No, they, no. they sent me from England to yes. take the to the take training in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. Okay, that's the story. Yeah. And then you didn't finish that training. No. So and washed that, out. Washed out, and that's how you got to the. Uh, outlying airport working in the control tower. Yeah, yes. Well, yeah, it yes. was a truck. It was a truck. Okay. Okay. And then... Uh, then after the crash, you decided to sign up for the uh, motorcycle courier. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's how they took you back to England from Actually, Halifax yeah. on the Queen Elizabeth. And they sent... Then, then I ended up in, in a place called Leeming. Okay. Big air drone that had Halifax bombers. Okay. And that was that was 26 miles from the headquarters, and my job was to pick up the photos from the raids at night. Yes. And bring them to the headquarters. Okay. And I had four four places I had to go. Okay. But day. let's go back and talk about the courier job. In that, um, you got to England. You got to Limming. Um, did you do this on a motorcycle? What? Did you uh, travel? Oh yeah. I'll, okay. Yeah, tell was, tell us a, about the motorcycle. That was, I what? had a I had a Norton. A Norton. English. Motorcycle. Yes. Had you ever ridden a motorcycle no, before? No. Was there any training? Oh yeah, we trained. The training I didn't like, the, but the the rough riding training I liked when you had to go over. A, hills and rocks and go through the water. Okay. That was kind of interesting. And it was not, did it have a sidecar? No. No. But you could hook one on there. Okay. It's, you know, but the, that's when a couple of times they, they let the, the chaplain go on to one of my short trips. Okay. You know, and I didn't even know and uh, how easy it was to lift the sidecar off uh -huh. the, the ground, you know. I thought it would be tricky. Yeah. All of a sudden, I see him sitting up here, you know. So it was very easy to lift, <laughs> lift the sidecar up. So was it dangerous? Well, I thought it was. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, I just thought, how come he, the transportation officer would let him ride with me, you mm -hmm. know? I didn't think that should be allowed. Okay. But anyway, anyway, he was a good guy. And as soon as we got to the town mm -hmm. of the airport, Gatrick, we right into the pub right away. Oh my gosh! Well, let's go back to the courier. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um, you um, basically took the photographs from the uh, Halifax bombers to headquarters. Headquarters. Yeah. Okay. And you had four or five stops on the way. Four. Four. I make a round. Trip. A round round trip. How long was the trip? Two hundred about two hundred miles. Two hundred miles. Now, would you do that in uh, every day? Good weather, bad weather, yeah, yeah. night, day? No, all, all in the day. And was it um, uh, in enemy territory? No. No, no it was it always was all, in England. All in Yorkshire. Yorkshire, yeah. okay. Yeah, there was two. There was another one very close, and then there was another one about 60 miles away, and then there was a, you know, another one about 30 miles away. Okay. So it, but the total trip was... About 200 miles. How did that take you all day? No. How no. long did it take? Oh, I would say uh, maybe four hours and a half. Okay, okay. Now, um, what was the um, uh, the countryside? What was uh, was it just full of airports? 
No, uh, no, it was just uh, just regular country stuff. Okay, you know, okay. Just like, uh, like you would see most anywhere. What about the different bases? You say you stopped at three or four well, places? Yeah, I stopped at uh, t two. That I, I, I can remem remember that uh, top cliff because that was an easy name. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other ones, I, I can't, my name, my, my memory doesn't remember those names. Right. But, but they were different air bases that yeah, you stopped at. But the uh, headquarters guy uh -huh. was uh, Wing Commander Willis. Okay. And uh, he he would let me see some of the pictures. What were the pictures like? From the bomb, from the raids. From the raids. Yeah, oh. saw, I saw that one about the Pulaski bomber. Yes. Uh, when in, uh, he was, a, I think he was American. Went in to the, the oil fields. Oil, oil, bomb the oil tank, the oil. Uh, Fields yeah. at Palesti. Palesti. Now, did, was there a lot of damage? Oh, total. Total? Yeah. Okay. What time period? Oh. When, what date um, was year and month, maybe? That would be, that would have to be a, in, in uh, 142. That would have to be, in, seems to me like it would be the fall of 43 because I had my, my crash in the next. No, I had my crash, crash before that. Forty-four. I no, I had my no the un, crash on Warsaw. Oh, okay. That's, okay. You coming, haven't told me that. <laughs> I'm coming to that. That's what sent me home. Oh, okay. Yeah. And. Uh, oh, when? What about the date for the airplane crash? What? Uh, the one where I fell out of the. Apartment? Yes. That was 1941. That was 1941. Yeah. And so after 1941, then you went into the courier service. Yeah, I, I, okay. I, yeah, I signed a paper in New right. York, Yorkton, and they sent us. And so you were in the couriers for a couple, three years. Forty-one. Yeah, forty-one, forty-two. Yeah, three and a half years. I. Uh huh. Think. Okay. And so then uh, another crash happened. Well, that was on a motorcycle. I was down at the. And my boy finally looked it up on the on the map, and because I I kept telling him it was the Sunderland Flying Boat Company, mm -hmm. and he said I can't I never know, I've ever seen that name, mm -hmm. and so he looked it up and looked it up and finally last night he said, you know I did find that so I guess you're right it was a Sunderland Flying Boat Company. Well I had been there before I was bringing over a new daylight daylight plan for a, mm -hmm. a, a, a new a new bomb. Okay. Bomb site, mm -hmm. and um, coming back, I was uh, going around the curve, and there it was an air raid, mm -hmm. and two trucks had collided, and of course I whipped around the corner, went into the two, the two trucks, and ended up in the hospital, so for three, unconscious for three days. My goodness! And you know, my crash helmet was busted right in, and they couldn't figure out how there was no blood there. Uh huh. But there was blood in my ears. Okay. Uh, but anyway, I was there, and the first thing, the funny thing, was me. The investigator officer comes to the hospital. This was an English hospital. Mm -hmm. He comes in. He wants to know where, where my motorbike is. The nurse says, "Get out of here." She said, the man's just come to after being three days unconscious, and you ask him where the motorcycle is. I lost my motorcycle. I lost my gun and everything else. I don't know where it went. Uh -huh. You know. I, Ended up in the hospital, and then, and then I, my, I, my arm was locked up here. See yes. That? And he tried to bend it down. Mm -hmm. And geez, I'd fallen on the floor, and you know, he couldn't. Mm -hmm. And I was paralyzed on this side. So my goodness. And so, I said, he said, well, I guess I'll cut your arm off. I said, oh, I'm in the Canadian Air Force. I'd like to go to a Canadian hospital, which I had the privilege. Mm -hmm. If I had been was in the British Air. Air Force, they would just do what they wanted to do. So this was an English hospital. It's in Oakland, Oakland. Mm -hmm. I, th I think I got that out. Of but anyway, uh, I got to the Canadian hospital, and a, with, within a month, this guy came from Peterborough, Ontario, I think, and he said, "Oh, I can fix that." Cut out my radius head mm -hmm. here and I had almost a straight arm. Is that right? And 
it locks up every now and again mm -hmm. and my leg this leg mm -hmm. is bad mm -hmm. I got what they call clicks in your knees okay you know and um, so I've lived with that all but driving down from here the, mm -hmm. this leg gives me fits okay and uh, but two years ago this arm locked up on me mm -hmm. and that had been the first time in probably 40 years okay it locked up on okay me. Um, let's go back to the courier service in that you um, went to different places and you picked up oh, dispatch cases yeah. or, uh, or film. Anything secret. Even. Right. Now, did you feel that um, uh, you were safe, that anybody was going to steal the stuff that you had? Oh, yeah. The bags were always locked. And, and then you had to carry a gun? Yeah. And so uh, you were really responsible. Responsible. The only problem was I never had, ever fired a gun. Okay. <laughs> they didn't give you any training for the gun? Well, they did, you know. Yeah. Boom, boom, you know. Right. But uh, I'll come to the when, when the, um, the D-Day came. Mm -hmm. they, uh, this is so silly, but they sent me down to take a machine gun course. Okay. And uh, sent, that was in, in Clacton on Sea. Mm -hmm. And that's when we heard the planes going over and we rushed. It was about two o'clock in the morning. We rushed out and here's this, all these gliders and everything going over. And, and the, the Thames was thick with ships, mm -hmm. just thick with ships. You know. That's my recollection. That's why I'd like to see that. Because yes. Uh, the National Geographic had never, mm -hmm. never shown much of the D-Day. Yes. You know. Did uh, you get any um, prior knowledge that D-Day was going to happen? Yeah, yeah. Only from, only from the guys in the headquarters when I okay. bring back the photographs. Yes. And they said uh, there's going to be a big push one of these days. Okay. And you know, it, it was kind of funny. You know who. Who really was a Scottish weatherman mm -hmm. who told Eisenhower when to go. Okay. And they had about four delays, you know. Yes. And uh, he said, tonight or never. Okay. And it, because they had to uh, worry about the high tides and all of those all things. All those things. Yes. You know, see, see, the first invasion failed. Okay. At Dunkirk. At Dunkirk, yes. And they lost because of the wall. Yes. And, uh, so, uh, when when he said it's tonight or never, so how uh, that D Day happened. Now, um, was there a lot of um, a lot of excitement before D Day? Oh yeah, people were rustling around, you know, because they didn't know what's happening. You know, they knew mm -hmm. something was going to happen. Yes. You know, and all the soldiers were told to prepare. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, everybody was excited because then everybody was nervous, because mm -hmm. we were bombed day and night. You know. Yes. Uh, in London, not so much in Leeming, you mm -hmm. know, because we were up North Yorkshire. Right. But um, when I was in London, it was night and day. Um. Talk about London, or um, talk about your free time, in that you were uh, riding the motorcycle, delivering all these things, but that didn't take your whole time. So no. you had um, uh, leave time, and you had um, um, passes where you could go into town. Well, with the, uh, the fast riders, see, you had privileges to go to any any base if you were out uh, or on an overnight, mm -hmm. deal, you know, far away, you know. Uh, you were you had a pass to go uh, to any air base or mm -hmm. any army base, and, uh, and you for, could for, uh, for, for uh, overnight sleep. Okay, and you could eat in their mess halls. Yeah. And, right. We never. I never was on a parade. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> never was on a parade. What was the attitude of the other soldiers? What were they? Uh, um, uh, well, they're all airmen. They're all airmen. Okay. And they were they were typically pilots and supporting the pilots. The mechanics and right office staff. You know. And these were uh, you mentioned the Halifax bombers, so they were the ones that were going to Europe. Yeah, see, they were the big bomber at the time, yes. and then the Lancaster. Yes. Took took 
over to Halifax. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and then one of the other drones had the Wellingtons. Yes. You know, and uh, but uh, the Halifax, we had the Halifax. Mm -hmm. Did you get a feeling that they were accomplishing something? Oh yeah, because that's, see, that's why the, the Germans were, they feared the Spitfire. Okay. Because the Spitfire had a maneuverability mm -hmm. to outmaneuver them. They were faster, the Messerschmitts were faster, but mm -hmm. they had, and I noticed the one that's on the floor there, that they seemed to have just a, a slight difference in the wing. Okay. That. Uh, must have allowed them to maneuver better. Yes. Something, yes. You know, because uh, the wind velocity would create mm -hmm. something like more that. maneuver. Our um, Spitfire has a Griffin engine in it, so it's a big, it's a uh, more powerful engine yeah. than the traditional Rolls Royce yeah. engine. Yeah, that's what we had. That's what you had. The Rolls Royce. Okay. Okay. But that, you know, the Germans, we'd we'd fly over in the day, mm -hmm. uh, at night, we'd, no, no, the, the fortresses would go over at night, and we flew in, on the other fighters. Okay. And that's, that's why the, I still were trying to find his name, and I looked it up, the, the ace that was in the Wolf Squadron from Croydon, okay. who got the highest honor. It was two of them got the highest honor in Canada. Okay, so that's the Wolf Squadron. It was Wolf Squadron. And where was it located? Croydon. Croydon. Okay, and you don't know any numbers as far as squadron numbers? N no. 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 Okay. But but there was a... I wasn't there long enough. See, okay. To, and this ace flew Spitfires? Yeah, he he shot down, a, as far as I knew, he shot down 38 planes. My goodness. Wow. But that's there was a, another guy who shot... I don't know if he's American or Canadian, but shot 46. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I knew that guy. But I wish I could remember his name. Mm -hmm. you know? Maybe we can look him up a little later. Yeah, because, uh, but my boy was worked all night last night on the thing trying to find mm -hmm. who he could. He said McKnight, and I said, that don't sound like Okay, name, okay. You know. um, talk about the, um, uh, did you ever go into town on uh, Liberty? Well, uh, oh yeah. And that's, that's a story in itself. Okay. Yeah. We, when we were leaving, see, we were 26 miles from Harrogate. Yes. That was a nice town, mm -hmm. really nice town. And um, we went over there and there was 26 people mm -hmm. on, the, on the bus. Okay. And the bus driver got drunk. Oh my goodness. So now we're 26 miles from home, right? So he got drunk in town? He got drunk in town. Okay. And then, um, so the sergeant that was on the bus, anybody got a license to drive a bus? Mm -hmm. No, no answer. And then some, some, I call him a jerk, <laughs> said, Curry got one. He said, you got a license to drive a bus? I said, yeah, I got a license to drive a crane, too, and a bomb tender. <laughs> I, that's true. I uh -huh. have a license to drive a bomb tender, a crane, and uh, and a bus, and, and cars and motorcycles, mm -hmm. of course. And, but I said, I've never driven a bus, ever. So he said, well, you're going to drive this one. And, hell, I was nervous. I was, you know, I was 20 years old, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and, Two guys out inside in the window with flashlights mm -hmm. because our, our our headlights were about this big, you know. Yes. Blackout conditions. Blackout conditions. So we're 26 miles. And it took us about two hours to get home, you know, because I'm so nervous. You right. Know, and, and the roads over there, you know, are as wide. they're like this wide. Real narrow. Oh yeah, for buses. You know. Uh huh. You hardly. You could already have trouble passing, I think, two buses on some of those roads. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But anyway... Was it a double-decker bus? No. No. Just just like a school bus. Just like a school, school, bus. school okay. bus. But the thing is, they were making me more nervous by saying, Come on, kick it up, kick it <laughs> up, you know. But anyway, we went about 15, 20 miles an hour, 25 uh -huh. at the top. You right, uh-huh. And we finally got home, and anyway, they, they all said, you know, 
glad and, and sorry we bothered you so much. <laughs> but I could have kicked them in the ass. Yes. <laughs> now, you mentioned you had other driver's license, like you could um, drive a crane. Did never, you? Never, never did never those had. things. I, I, one night I drove a bomb tender. A bomb tender. Now, and what is a bomb tender? To carry the bombs to the plane. Okay. And um, pouring rain. Mm -hmm. Now we got to go down a little kind of a path. Mm -hmm. And it's about, I'd say, a mile and a half. And it was muddy. And I slid into the ditch. First time, slid mm -hmm. into the ditch. So anyway, I had to get help to come. So the guy said, transportation officer said, that's the first time you drove a bomb tender? I said, yeah. He said, it's your last. <laughs> I said, thank you. <laughs> well, the bombs are worth about 8,000 pounds. Is that right? Uh, My for goodness. the Halifax, which is yes. a heavy bomber. Yeah. Yeah. But I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wish to drive any more bombs. Now, earlier you mentioned uh, sports. You mentioned hockey and you mentioned wrestling. No. No. I played hockey and golf. You played hockey and golf. Yeah, okay. I, played, I even played professional. No kidding. Yeah. I, before the war, before I went over. So came. this would be in the early 20s, middle, uh, no, 30s, early 30s, middle 30s. Well, I went over in 40 or so. No, it'd be 40. Mm -hmm. 40. We signed a, another fellow and myself, we signed a minor league pro hockey for the Cleveland Barons. Is that right? And uh, and I played professional hockey, professional golf as a kid. I Is that from right? 16 to 17. So what kind of a handicap? Well, I was a pro. A pro, golf right? Ball. Yeah. Well, I was assistant pro. Yes. Uh-huh. And uh, that was only that was only because of course I my lowest handicap was 4. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, we were called professionals because we sold all the Golf equipment. Balls and yes. In the pro shop. And right. So uh huh. They made us uh, professionals. And when I came out west of the Dalles, I was still a five. Okay. And, handicap. and you said that you had those different jobs, yeah. and one of them was at the golf course, and that was for family money? That was to help the family? No. No? That was to help me. Help you? <laughs> okay. Help me. <laughs> no, my family was. My family was middle class. Secure. Okay. Oh, we they were secure. We never ever had to worry about okay. the next door. Okay. Know, or okay. The next day. Okay. Um, talk about the English people. You were in England. Uh, you were driving on the motorcycle. You got out and saw everybody. You were in town on Liberty. Um, what was the attitude? Were they um, uh, were in it for the long haul or? Um, uh, we've got to beat those Germans, or hey, they're going to invade us, or uh, was there fear? Um, what about the bombs? They were hundred percent for everybody. They okay. thanked everybody, Americans, whoever was helping, yep. and they were thankful for everything that was going. But that was when I was in therapy. See, mm -hmm. they, I, I couldn't do nothing. So mm -hmm. when I got to be. Oh, month, maybe a month and a half in the hospital, they gave me a bicycle. Mm -hmm. And the village was four and a half miles from the, the hospital. And so I became like a courier again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I gave me a bike. I'd do all the little, if anybody wanted anything in the village, they didn't mm -hmm. know the, the desk and mm -hmm. how to pick it up, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was four and a half miles in, four and a half miles home, and I knew everybody in the village. Uh -huh. Because I'd go in and have a beer and right. chat with the people. You know, yes. And, and uh, did, I did all the messaging. Okay. Now, we hear uh, so much about the bombing, and that must, that must have been terrible. But the people endured it. They put oh. up with it. Oh, boy, did they ever. They were, they were amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, because for the short time I was in Croydon, we had to run to the shelters every night. Is that right? Oh, yeah. They bombed day and night. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where did you have those buzz bombs and all those well, things? Well, that's the part that I'll tell you about the buzz bomb. They were more scary than the bombs. Okay. You see, when the first buzz bomb came in, it, when the motor shut off, it dived. Yes. Okay. The next one was better. 
And that was that guy's name, Braun? Warner Braun Braun, yes. He developed the second one. The V2? When the motor stopped, you didn't know if it was a dive bomb or a glide bomb. Okay. See, that was the glide bomb was the scary one. Mm -hmm. Because the noise would come over here, we could hear it, see? But it may land over there. Okay. And that was a scary point. Because you didn't know where didn't it was going to go. And they had a lot of um, um, explosive power. Oh. So they would take buildings down. Yeah. It, they, it was a real, you know, it, it didn't look like anything when it was flying over, mm -hmm. you know. But it, yeah, it was powerful enough to take a building down. Okay. And now you mentioned the shelters. What uh, what were the shelters? Subways. Subways. Okay. That was in London only. Yes. So uh huh. We, did, we didn't need any up at the uh, air drums. Okay. Okay. So basically, they used the subways. They used the subways in London for the shelters. Ah, oh, be doggone. Yeah. Yeah, everybody run to the shelters as soon as the sirens would go. Boy, run to the shelters. And then you were just mixed with everybody. Yeah. So you made friends with everybody. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm one of the unlucky ones as a golfer. Yes. I had a chance to play St. Andrews three times. Uh-huh. And never got to finish around. Oh, is that right? Because of the weather. And the weather. Yeah, my first uncle took me in 1940, first part of 41 before. Well, actually, I was lucky because it was shortly after that that uh, I, I got to send back to Canada. Yes. And then in 1942, when I went back to England, my uncle from Glasgow took me to uh, St. Andrews. Because it was, I, I don't think we even had a pay in those days for, for a soldier. Mm -hmm. you know? But it's, it's a place where uh, it's a public course, you know, mm -hmm. it belongs to the city. Mm -hmm. So it's a, but I had a chance to play and never got to do all those. The third time I went over was for our 25th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And about two years before we went over, well, I guess one year, uh, the, Tom Octoroni's father came over to visit our pro because of, they, they were friends from mm -hmm. Edinburgh see, before Jimmy went mm -hmm. to Canada. And um, so, and John Player, the guy who made golf clubs, mm -hmm. he was there with his father. So shortly after they went back home to England, uh, here comes a big package in the mail, and mm -hmm. this John Player had uh, made a wedge, first it's wedge. Now it's a uh, now it's a collector's item because it was first wedge with little holes in the yes. instead of lines. It's yes. Little holes in the, and um, so when I went back on our anniversary, I went to Tom Octoloni's pro shop mm -hmm. and uh, told him about meeting his father. Well, God almighty, I thought I was a long lost friend. Is know? that right? And he uh, took me in and he said, would you like to play golf? I said, I didn't bring any golf clubs over. I said, and I told him about having mm -hmm. played, you know, twice and with my uncles and never got to finish around. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was threatening rain. Yes. You know. So I said, I don't have any golf clubs. I don't have any to wear. Mm -hmm. He says, what do you think I got here? <laughs> he gave me a set of golf clubs, windbreaker, and got two old Scottish men to play with me. No kidding. And I got to play. But you can't get in the clubhouse. You yes. Know, you're not allowed to yeah. And uh, so we get down, I think it was the fifth floor. The farthest I got was, was the seventh floor, mm -hmm. seventh hole. And this time I got, I think it was the fifth hole. And the elder one of the two men said, this isn't fit for man or beast. And I was afraid to say, can we quit? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But right. he, he brought it up. He says, let's go and have a couple of tonics. And so. Went down the street and the woolen mills there. Yes. Right there. Yes. Have you been there? Yes. Well, you know where the woolen woolen mills. And yes. Where they give you the shot of hay and did they still do that? I don't know. We didn't go in, but oh. we went by it. Oh well, you go in and they've got big pans of those little sausages, you mm -hmm. know, and they, they give you a shot of hay. Mm-hmm. 
and the Hagen Hague. And I read scotch, of course, but I didn't care. Right. They, that's what they were having. That's the only drink they serve. Anyway. Exactly. And so um, I s finished mine, and he says, would you like another one? I said, okay. So uh, my wife was in town with a la another lady, see, mm -hmm. wh while I went to the pro shop, and I mm -hmm. didn't think. So she had gone back, and they told her that we were out, I'm out mm -hmm. on the golf course, see. So they went back to town because it's a beautiful town. It is. It's, it's very nice. And uh, it, well, it's an architectural mm -hmm. town and, mm -hmm. and a college town. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we got out of Willow Mills and I bought a nice sweater there. Mm -hmm. It was a camel hair sweater. Mm -hmm. So he says, "Could you stand another drink?" I said, "Well, I gotta, you know, my wife be coming back and maybe she get mad at me." Oh, he said, "We'll tell her." So we went down to a pub, uh -huh. just down the way right. there, on the road there, you know. And uh, we had another couple of drinks, and he said, oh, well, I guess we had enough, you know. <laughs> so I went back to Tom Ocaloni's <laughs> pro shop and talked to him for, oh, about an hour and a half or so. Mm -hmm. And then my wife came back and picked us up. We we stayed at the motel right by the first or fourth bridge. Yes. That motel there. Yes. We stayed there. Mm -hmm. Well, we were there um, uh, doing archaeology and had lunch where we could see the uh, first green and the 18th. Oh, yeah. And uh, interesting place. Oh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. And I was glad to get, you know, to see it. But do you play golf? No, no. Now, did you carry on golf um, in your later years? Well, the reason I got the golf club from John Player, mm -hmm. see, I, I, when I came back from the mm -hmm. war, you know, I couldn't play mm -hmm. very good, so I played one-handed. Oh, okay. And he thought that was good, you know. Mm -hmm. And I played with, with another fellow who had a very bad accident in Anzio, mm -hmm. and he had a crippled arm, mm -hmm. and he showed him how to hold the club, mm -hmm. to replay, to get them to, get them to replay. Yes. And I remembered those things. See, mm -hmm. and I told Tom Octoroni, he said. Yeah, he says my, you know, my father told me about some of those things. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I started to play now. You know, I, I can, I just still have a little trouble because I'm 90. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, but I never had a problem, mm -hmm. problem before walking. But now I told my doctor just before we came home. I said I can dance better than I can walk. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, I still dance twice a week. Oh, no kidding. So you're pretty fit. Yeah. Yeah. And my health is good. Good. Wonderful. Let's go back to uh, the English people in that you were meeting them in the cities uh, at different times and you said that they were uh, very friendly and appreciative. Yeah. Well, how else could you describe I, them? Well, I, I found them very friendly and they were, they were uh, quick to help you and inf inform you, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening or or this or that and let you know where you were, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I thought they were very nice. Now we had some shortages here, uh, like tires and gasoline, and we actually had ration stamps for them. What about in England? Did you think that they were, uh, uh, they had shortages also? Oh yeah, many. Explain. And, uh, well, uh, they were rationed terribly, uh, you know. But that, that was one of Churchill's biggest errors in, in his speeches. Okay. And he said the army, men in the army and navy, and gentlemen of the Air Force. Oh. And boy, did he get criticized for that. Uh-huh. But no, we had good meals. We had good meals. Okay, but the population, do you think? The population was very short of fun. Okay. Very short. Mm -hmm. they, and they stuck it out. That was the point, that their attitude was still good. It, it, whether they were getting hit, which they were day, every day, their, their attitude about the, the war was, we're going to get that damn Hitler. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Okay. Because all of their men were gone. There were, uh, oh, yeah. Dude. Well, they were in army posts like like we are doing yes. now. Yes, you know mm -hmm. we're the Americans are trying to police the world, which mm -hmm. I think is silly, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I don't think there will ever be a, um, a democracy over there. Yeah, I, I yeah. really don't think so. Um, what happened uh, at the armistice? 
in that um, you mentioned D-Day and you mentioned all of the airplanes and the ships and all of that. Uh, do you know more? Uh, have more about yeah, D-Day? No, I no. Okay. I and see, I was sent home before the war ended. Oh, you were sent home before. Yeah, that's okay. how I got on the on the. See, the Americans had chartered the uh, Queen Elizabeth for a hospital ship. Okay. And I was one of the thirty-five Canadians mm -hmm. that got onto that ship to come home. Okay, and I came home December sixteenth, nineteen forty-four. Okay, and uh, where did you uh, land, and were you put in a hospital then? Yeah, no, because I was, uh, re you know... You were recovering. Recovering enough to die. I didn't have a uniform to come home. Okay. They didn't even give me a uniform. Uh-huh. And because I was on the hospital list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had just kind of casual clothes, you know, mm -hmm. and because uh, they didn't care since... So we got to Boston, and then yes. we had to stay on Queen Elizabeth for about four days so as they could get all the Americans off the ship, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we got sent on a train from Montreal, from from uh, Boston to Ottawa, Ontario. Mm -hmm. That was the headquarters there. And then they shipped me to St. Mary's Hospital in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had to go for there for therapy. Now, uh, you were not then um, uh, a continuous patient. You were sort of an outpatient uh, yeah. that you had to come back. Yeah. Now, did you live um, near the hospital then? No. Or was there a military base? No. I lived, no. I lived about five miles from the hospital. Okay. And that was, there was no relatives around? In, where, in, in home to? Oh, uh, yeah. I went to my, my house. My, oh. My family home. Okay. It was about, I'd say, more than five, maybe seven miles away. Okay, okay. That was a veteran's hospital. All right. And then you say you went to the family home. Yeah. Did you get back in the family business? Were you discharged then? No, I, yeah, I bought my father's business. Okay. I bought my father's business. Yeah, you came, but I want to go back. You came back on the boat, mm -hmm. the Queen Elizabeth, mm -hmm. and uh, then finally you were sent to Montreal on the train. Well, uh, they were sending me home. They were sending you, they were discharging you? Yeah. Well, I didn't get discharged until 1945. Okay. But did you have to report to any military location? Yeah. Or to, could? To the hospital. To the hospital. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, but, that, but that didn't last for more than a few months. Okay. And okay. then, uh, so that meant I was, I bought my father's business in 1946. Okay. Okay. And then I, I came to the United States in 53. Okay. Now, did you bring the business with you? No. 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 I, I uh, F.W. Woolworth yeah. oh, put me out of business. Bought you, put you, we hope. couldn't compete with them, okay. just like Walmart is yes. doing here. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. No. And, and uh, we, like I say, we bought a, a Portland journal at the mm -hmm. time. And... Um, a friend of mine was wrestling for, I forget his name now, but he, he had the arena where all that deal is now where Powell's bookstore is. Yes, remember? yes. And um, he would come back to Montreal and he would tell me he loved Portland. Mm -hmm. So we were out, got the newspaper, we saw an ad in there. So we, took, we flipped in a, a nickel. Mm -hmm. This was you and your wife? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether we go to Edmonton, Alberta, or Portland, mm -hmm. Oregon. Mm -hmm. So we looked this ads for Skyline Hospital, mm -hmm. and um, we phoned him, mm -hmm. and he said, get out here as fast as you can. And we didn't do it. They did it. They got us here in three weeks. Is that right? We couldn't even, we didn't have any chance to get rid of our furniture or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, three weeks we got in here. And, and that, that was by train? Well, no, I was broke. Okay. And I, I had to drive a car, I deliver a car to Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay. And they, it was a brand new Pontiac. Pontiac? Brand new Pontiac. And uh, that was an experience coming across the country. We went over Medicine Mountain 
in, in, in Wyoming, mm -hmm. and the sign was as big as one of those doors there, change required. Yes. Of course, I had no change. Mm -hmm. you know, so I went up in the hill, first gear. Mm -hmm. Got up to the top of the hill, and I get stopped mm -hmm. by a cop. How'd you get up here? Well, here I am. You know. He says, didn't you see the sign down there? I said, I don't believe it. Maybe I was talking with my kids. Mm -hmm. I had two kids. Maybe I was talking to my kids and didn't see the sign. He says, how are you going to get down? I'm going to get into uh, Rawlings mm -hmm. below. I said, I'll go down the same way as I come up first in first year. Mm -hmm. He says, well, you made it here. I guess you'll make it down. I said, thank you very much. <laughs> so he let me go, mm -hmm. no, no, no fine or nothing. Mm -hmm. The only time I got stopped in Iowa was uh, when uh, going down a hill, the road was covered in snow because mm -hmm. it was, it, I think it was in March, mm -hmm. covered in snow, and he charges me for speeding, and it was a pre-programmed uh, mm -hmm. sheet of paper, you know, and the fine was eighteen dollars. My kids are out screaming their heads off, you know, because the cop has arrested us, drove us down to the, it was a justice of the peace, you know, and they walked in, locked the door. Mm -hmm. I thought, what are you locking the door for, you know? And I have to sit before this guy and he gives me a little chatter, you know, mm -hmm. and everything. So when I was going out the door, I said, you know, this McCarthy deal was going on. Yes. I said, this looks like a part of McCarthy. And he says, watch your language, fella. <laughs> 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 but that was the only trouble I had coming okay. up. Okay. Now, what kind of, you mentioned uh, the Pontiac. Was that the car you took west? Well, yeah, that was from, I, it, it was to be delivered to mm -hmm. a dealership. So uh-huh. Because my car wouldn't brought me out here. Right. And um, so I couldn't, so I called up the, the dealer, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And he said, well, General Motors is always looking for people to drive cars west. Mm -hmm. And so I called up and went to Oshawa, Ontario, and get the brand new car, you know, mm -hmm. drove out here. We got to, uh, we're, anyway, we got, it's where Penny's was first started, mm -hmm. J.C. Penny. Mm -hmm. It's a little name, you probably know it's next to Utah. Anyway. Because uh, he told me you get the wheels packed, you know, mm -hmm. and everything, any maintenance to mm -hmm. get done, and they would pay for it, you know. And the guy says, "Hey, come! This pony has got a Chevrolet motor in it." I said, "Well, <laughs> didn't you see the license plate? It's Canadian car." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it was fun, and went to the restaurant to give my kids a wooden nickel. Uh huh. You know. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now, what was gasoline? What uh, price was gasoline? Well, it the cheapest gas we got was in Boise, Idaho, 14 cents a gallon. Is that right? They had a terrible war there. And the funny part was, I went to the gas station, and I only had $50 traveler's checks. You know? mm -hmm. Went to the gas station, and he says, I can't cash that. I said, it's a $50 bill, you know. He says, go up to Albertsons and cash it. I thought, this guy's totally honest. He trusts me to go to up the, mm -hmm. the store and get <laughs> out of here, you mm -hmm. know. Didn't even ask me to write a check, or which you know, if I'm, if I would say, mm -hmm. hey, write a check or give me something. Mm -hmm. He says, so I brought the money back. He says, I knew you were honest. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah. And it made us laugh, you know, because I said, well, I was in business, you know, and I said, I never, I never let a guy get out of here <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> with that. <laughs> okay, so now you took the car to the Pontiac to Portland, Oregon. No. No? Yeah, well, yeah, to, to White Salmon. Right, yes. And then I had to leave the kids off because uh, White Salmon had, had already arranged for us to stay in that little hotel in, mm -hmm. in White Salmon. And uh, I drove the car up myself to, to British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, uh, I got bought a little Chev car mm -hmm. in, in White Salmon. Mm -hmm. 
and they were they couldn't have done more for us you know they they star fruit company mm -hmm. rented me an apartment for a dollar a day no kidding dollar a day and it's a, it's where that little they've got a nice park there mm -hmm. now they've got mm -hmm. a mcdonald's there now mm -hmm. but it was a little there was just two of them mm -hmm. a dollar a day and the hospital sent me down to Mansfield Furniture. Mm -hmm. Let us buy furniture. They would be responsible for it. it mm -hmm. was, they really needed a nurse. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then you became a nurse? No. No? no Your wife was a nurse? My wife's a nurse. No, I, yep. I got a job with Sears Roebuck. Okay. And I, uh, I got a job with Sears Roebuck. And, and uh, my first job was I was going, I wanted to be a salesman in the store. Mm -hmm. you know? But anyway, they sent me to the Dallas to mm -hmm. survey the area mm -hmm. for to build a, a store, a catalog store. Mm -hmm. So I really had a trouble getting mm -hmm. population because mm -hmm. they wanted a hundred thousand to mm -hmm. put a store in. You know, mm -hmm. so I had to go as far away as as um, past. It's on the way to John Day mm -hmm. and up in there. And Stevenson. Mm -hmm. uh, That's across the river. And, and yes. Dale, yes. So that I could get my hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. I cheated a little bit. Okay. But, uh, but I got a hundred thousand. So then they sent me down to build the store. Oh my goodness! You know, I didn't know construction, but mm -hmm. you know, I had to make arrangements with the contractor because it no, wasn't really much to build a store. Mm -hmm. You know, four walls and a couple mm -hmm. of desks. And then, uh, so then, this guy Jim Boyle, he said, "Well." Would you like to join my department? Mm -hmm. I said, sure. So I did sales, mm -hmm. and when we built stores, so we built seven stores. Oh my seven goodness! Out in Kent, Washington, Camas, Hermiston, John, uh, Pendleton, mm -hmm. and Dow, mm -hmm. and the one at Kent was the funniest one. Mm -hmm. We built. It was quite quite a, a large store. Mm -hmm. you know. And um, we went out to dinner. Mm -hmm. We had a few cocktails, and when we came mm -hmm. home, all our appliances are gone. Can I uh, say s let's yeah. stop? Yeah. And um, I want to um, change this tape. We're running too much out of the, uh, the stories. <laughs> That's They're okay. Military. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, so now we're um, we're on the Columbia River. We're in the Dalles. The Dalles. And um, uh, we're starting to build um, different uh, Sears stores. Were they all catalog, catalog stores except yeah. Kent? Kent was a regular store. Well, it was bigger than a catalog store. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See. The, the catalog stores only have a few appliances on yes. the floor. Mm -hmm. But anyway, when we came back, we went in the, went in the back door, mm -hmm. and we got in there, and all the appliances are gone. So, so we questioned with people and said, oh yeah, a truck came and took them all away. He said they were the wrong appliances, and they have to bring new ones because the store is going to be open the next day. They have to bring new ones tomorrow. You know. So that was a big joke, and we, yes. it was, it was really not a big joke to my my boss. Mm -hmm. He was furious, and yes. we had nothing to do with the damn thing. Mm -hmm. But then anyway, he was furious. But then I, I I I did most of my sales selling, and mm -hmm. the biggest joke was I went up to Condon, mm -hmm. you no know, to. Hepner. Hepner, yes. And uh, the guy had a 36 acre mm -hmm. sheep ranch. And he wanted barbed wire because mm -hmm. we were, Sears were selling three point barbed wire from mm -hmm. Germany at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, he wanted 10, 10 rods. I didn't even know what the hell a rod was. Mm -hmm. you know? And 
anyway, it was not 10 rods he wanted, but it was like thousands of feet. It well, was, there's 80 feet in a rod. Yes, <laughs> but a roll is a mile. Yeah, and I didn't know. Yes. I had a call in Prudential Insurance man to find out where a rod was. <laughs> I didn't let the guy know. Right. I just wrote it on my paper when I got back to the Dallas. Yeah. I called up the Prudential Insurance man. The guy he gave me a little blue book mm -hmm. you know, of all the yardage and everything. Mm -hmm. It was kind of funny. And you know what? One year I sold. I was there. One year I sold a box car. Is that right? Of a barbed wire. Of barbed wire. They would come come down from Kent and yes. Morrow, Wasco, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, all picked it up. I never handled a bale. Right. They all brought their trucks and loaded it out of the box car. You know. I'll be doggone. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it was a good one. Then I got disgusted with Sears Roebuck because they cut my commission from 8% to 5%. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to get a half of 1% uh, for, for opening the source, mm -hmm. which they never lived up to. But anyway, so I bought the Dairy Queen, mm -hmm. bought the Dairy Queen franchise, mm -hmm. and I sold one when, when my wife died. Mm -hmm. Well, I sold the store, mm -hmm. uh, t and I was there 20 years. Mm -hmm. Dairy Queen. That was in 1930. So I've been retired for 30 years. Okay, let's go back to um, the Dalles. Um, a white salmon, uh, all of those places. You were there in the late forties. No, no, I was there in the in the fifties. Fifties, okay. See, I I didn't come to the country until fifty three. Till fifty three. Yeah. Okay. What dams do you remember on the Columbia River? The Dalles and the and, and the John Day. Okay. And Bonneville and was Bonneville, it? And Bonneville. Course, yeah. There okay. was, that was the first one. Okay. Now, do you uh, remember any uh, a time that the river froze over, a real cold time? No, uh, I don't remember that. But uh, I remember when they the trouble they had at Salilo. Salilo, yes. You know. Okay. Yeah. Talk about that. Well, not, I can't talk too much about it. But we might go down there and buy the fish. Fish. Mm-hmm. By the salmon, mm -hmm. and we went to a power there one time, but mm -hmm. it w didn't interest me much. Mm -hmm. We didn't go back. But uh, one of my biggest gripes about the Dalles, I'm a 57-year member of the golf club, mm -hmm. and they won't even give me a break on the, <laughs> on the dues. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm the oldest one playing golf at the Dalles, mm -hmm. and and they give from November. They give from November to March. Locals mm -hmm. can play for twenty dollars, and they won't let me have a year for twenty dollars. I only play once a week now, yeah. and my two partners now don't want to play next year. Uh -huh. And so I told them, you know, I said, you know, the dues are nineteen hundred dollars a year, you know, and that's a, too much to pay for one game of golf. That's like forty dollars for me, right? You know, so I'm going to the next board meeting when I get home, uh, and I'm going to tell them, if you want eighty dollars a month, I'll pay eighty dollars a month, or or would you rather have zero? <laughs> I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. A uh, question: uh, Do you remember the uh, salad bar in the Dalles? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you get sick? No, no. But my friend. Describe a little about. Well, my friend, his name was Eddie Spangler, he, he ran the, the restaurant at Lone Pine, mm -hmm. and they were hit at Lone Pine, and his wife got sick. Okay. Yeah, from Rajanese. Yes. Uh, yeah. And they uh, got involved in city government, oh, and they yeah, were almost... They, they changed the name of Antelope. Yes. And, uh, and they brought in people from all over the place to vote. Yes. Uh, in the election, yeah. And then it, they, you know, they got in trouble. Mm -hmm. Sheila, and when they put a threat on that judge in mm -hmm. Portland. Yes. So, I remember that. Uh -huh. But they, they very seldom came to the Dairy Queen. Okay. They very seldom. Mm -hmm. The only trouble I, I had with the Dairy Queen, 
the city park is just up the street from mm -hmm. from the Dairy Queen, and we used to have all the hippies come in, you know, mm -hmm. stink like terrible. Mm -hmm. I used to have to fumigate, fumigate <laughs> when they leave. Right. Uh huh. But that was my problem there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we talked about your children. We talked about your brothers and sisters. Well, I. Uh, yeah, but I know. Well, they all they all got married. Of course, mm -hmm. but, uh, what are they doing now? Well, they're all dead. Oh, is that right? Everybody's dead. I'm the last survivor. No kidding. Yeah. Well, what about your children? My children. Mm -hmm. I have Allison who lives. Yes. And uh, she's a secretary of schools mm -hmm. down one school. Mm -hmm. And my other son's living with me now. He's out of work. Mm -hmm. He was a network. Yeah, and computers. Yes. Network engineer for mm -hmm. MCI, and mm -hmm. they went bankrupt. And yes. They, they worked for WorldCom, and they yeah. went bankrupt. Yes. You know? Yes. And uh, I was there. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you were there. Yeah. Well, that's what he did. Mm -hmm. He he came here with us yes yesterday. Okay. Or, or the day before. Mm -hmm. But um, no, he's uh, the trouble is now he's. Too qualified for this job and not qualified for that job. Seeing, I thought I could get him in with Google. Yes. Well, Google's a total disappointment. Is that right? Yeah, total, total. Not very many people uh, talk about that. They, they built down by the waterfront. They well, put they, in a lot of buildings. They got tax free for 15 years. Is that right? To go there. Okay. And they were supposed to hire 250 people. Mm -hmm. You know who they hired? No. Janitors. Oh, is that right? Landscapers. Mm hmm. And um, uh, uh, restaurant. Okay. They got a cafeteria in there. Mm -hmm. And I know the guy. The guy, if you ever went through the Dallas at all, all all his steak, steakhouse, and mm -hmm. all his restaurant. Well, he's running uh, Google. That's all they hired. I'll be done. All their engineers are from India. No kidding. Most all of them. Mm -hmm. And they brought a couple of guys up from. Uh, uh, Palo Alto, Mountain, San Jose. Mountain, Mountain View. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, and uh, the guy, he, the manager of Google, don't even live in the town. Mm -hmm. Lives in no river. Yeah. Um, have you ridden a motor motorcycle since the service? No. No. Never again. Never again. Never again. Uh huh. I I can't believe it. You know, for jokes, for well, not jokes, they, they weren't jokes, but the bomb shelters would have little build ups. You know. But yes six, seven feet high, and we would go at night, and we'd go and jump over them, you know. We mm -hmm. thought we were doing great, you know. Mm -hmm. There's a kid, now if you watch these uh, shows on t yes, TV, right. they're 60 feet in the air doing somersaults on yes. the motorcycle. Yes, And there's one guy, and I would, I'd love to see it, but they announced that a guy did a, a somersault on a wheelchair. Oh, no. Now, I'd like to see that. But this kid was only 14, and he mm -hmm. jumped 60 feet. Yeah. No. And this one kid, is, he's about 16, he did a triple. Oh, gee. Now, a double or a single yeah. is, is enough. But a right. double, I don't know how heavy those bikes must be. They must be very, very light. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my Norton, see, there was another thing that people don't know in the invasion. A lot of people don't. They never revealed it because it was a disgrace. See, they dumped, had to dump about 4,000 motorcycles in the American Army. Mm -hmm. The Indians and the Harleys, mm -hmm. they were too heavy. Oh, is that too right? Heavy, see, we, we, I rode on the English bikes mm -hmm. in Norton. See, well, if you got, if I had gone overseas, right. if I got stuck in the mud or something, like that, I just pick it up, pick up, and start over again. Mm -hmm. You can't do that with a Harley or That's an right. Indian. Yeah, you know? they're so heavy. And they parked them all down, uh, uh, almost not far from Clacton on Sea. Mm -hmm. And they had to ship them all back home. I'll be darned. You know? <laughs> that was a disgrace. Yeah. Were they, did they have a big motor? Uh, the Norton, I don't know what the it what was, the But had. you could get up to pretty good speed. Oh, I, I beat a couple of guys coming down the highway one time, and they were, they were, uh, Americans, mm -hmm. what the hell kind of motorcycle is that? I said it's a, Mort a Norton, because we went in and had a beer, mm -hmm. 
And uh, I said, well, geez, is that, it really goes a single motor. Mm -hmm. And we saw, we saw that one in, that you got in here is kind of fancy. That's mm -hmm. a twin. Yes. Twin motor. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? But uh, that was a big joke with the Americans. They had to dump mm -hmm. all those Harleys. And yeah. See, we, we rode BSAs and mm -hmm. uh, Aerials. Mm -hmm. Aerial was the lightest, mm -hmm. and Norton's. Mm -hmm. That's a now, did you ever keep track of any of your war buddies? Yeah, but um, the two of them that I knew went overseas. My best buddy got killed in Anzio. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's reunion groups. Oh, somewhere. yeah. They sent me a notice one time. As a matter of fact, here's a joke, too, you know. When I went to the 60th anniversary in Vancouver, yes. you know, and I, I signed in Royal Canadian Air Force. Mm -hmm. And the gal says, were you our allies? <laughs> I said, no, you were our allies. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got that. So anyway, about a month later, I got a certificate and a badge from the American Air Force. Thanks for your service. Oh. I, I never was, never was a day in the American Air Force. You <laughs> give me a badge and a, and a certificate of service. That was kind of... So right hand and I left hand. I brought it out to my buddies as a country club and said, where'd you get that? How, how'd you get that? I said, I just went to the meeting and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Um, but, uh, is there anything uh, you want to tell your family? My family? Your family's going to see the movie, the, the video. Oh, well, and, only the Allison and, yeah, and right. Drew. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll show it to some friends. Okay, very I'll show good. it to some friends. Tell yes. them if you're ever down here, you know, yeah. come to the museum. <laughs> Wonderful. You have to sign it. You won't yeah. sell anything. Yeah, I understand. That's a good idea. Uh, is there anything that we miss talking about? Well, there's other stories, but, you know, you, dates are so hard to right. deal with, you know. But uh, these, the, the airplane was the most... Uh, important to me mm -hmm. because 42 years later you know you meet the farmer you meet the farmer you know oh boy and like i say i'm so mad at myself never getting his name you know yes because it it, it was important to mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. you know? but well i had i had lots of funny little things happen but can't record them all <laughs> yeah i understand you know oh we sure what can i shake your hand and say yeah. thank you for thank your service you. thank you That's really a, appreciate it good handshake yeah but, uh, yeah, now you're living here now. No, I'm living in Oregon. Oh, you're still, but you come down here? For, for the sun, the wintertime. It's, it's uh, mean and nasty up in Oregon. Uh, I've been down the last two years. Look what I got on. Today. Yes. It's 58 degrees. Yes. And we got hit. Allison's house got really hit last night. Her umbrella. Yes. A lot of rain. Oh, yeah, wind, wind, wind. Last night. Yeah. So I said, you know, I come down here for the sun. Oh, when I was leaving home, you know, well, yo, you're going to Palm Springs. <laughs> They're getting it pretty tough up there right now. They are. And uh, I said, well, last year I had us stay in their house with a robe on, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And uh, last night I had this on in the house. Yes. She got a dog that opens the door, goes, leaves the door open, mm -hmm. and it's cold. Sure. And then, have, have you noticed that the, the way the vents are put in the yes. houses, up, the heating vents are up in the right. ceiling? Mm -hmm. What the hell, who designed that? And that's Heat goes up, don't <laughs> go down. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know. <laughs> hey, I want to thank you, Alex. Yeah, well, I thank you.